Hello, my friends. So good to be with you this evening. Been looking forward to this. I'll tell you what, hard for me to believe that we're already here at the end of the week, Friday. Wow. I, what happened to the week? Well, I want to, what happened to the year? <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you what, I went through such a crazy time for a long time. Uh, you know, during this, the, during this coronavirus, I was just, I got to the place where I couldn't tell what day it was. I mean, it was like everything, everything began well the other day or whatever. It's like I, I couldn't get a handle on where I was. But, boy, this week has gone by so quickly. And so uh, I just really um, <clears throat> have been looking forward to this this evening. Uh, I've got something that I wanted to share with you guys this evening. I'm going to be talking uh, a lot about the questions and answers. I'm going to answer some of the questions that some of you have submitted. And so uh, just want you guys to relax a little bit and uh, uh, maybe pull up your coffee or whatever you've got. And we're going to take just a couple of moments and go through that. Uh, but I do want to say thank you. We're here at the end of the week, and we're going to be uh, having church on Sunday. That's just a few hours away, I guess. And uh, I, I want to just encourage you to come. I know that there's been some people that's been kind of social distancing, and I certainly understand that. And I want you to be safe. I want you to operate within the boundaries of what you feel good about. And uh, But I'd love to have you come. But I'm so glad you guys came. Hi, Beverly. Good to see you. Jim's good to see you. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Michelle. Uh, I sure love you. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you. Hi, Laurel. Good to see you. Uh, I'll tell you, all of you guys, so good to have you. Uh, we are going to have church on Sunday, and I really would like for you to plan on being there. Uh, we, we, at all possible, we're trying to encourage everybody. Now, we've got we've got uh, stations set up that, that has hand sanitizers. Uh, we've got our chairs separated a little bit. Of course, the families are kind of clumped together, but that's okay. But we're trying to set it up to where they can still be separate from the rest of them. And uh, there's some of the people that are wearing masks, and if you feel like wearing a mask, then I think you should. I I, I want you just to be what's comfortable uh, with where you are, because we're going to get through this thing, I promise. I, I would like to ask you, all of you, our friends, uh, as we're going into this weekend, simply for the sake of those who are still concerned, um, try to refrain from, from hugging and, and uh, touching. It, I mean, it's just that, that's so ingrained in our personalities, uh, especially mine. I'm just telling you right now, I, I just, I mean, I'd hug a fence post. I just, I, it's just something that's in me and I do it without even thinking about it. I mean, I just, I do it. And those of you that, that maybe I've crossed that line where uh, when, during this particular time, it made you a little uncomfortable. I'm so sorry. I really am trying to uh, keep from it, but I want to encourage the rest of you to be sensitive about those that are uh, uncomfortable with that. And just for a couple of more weeks, I'm just telling you, we're going to get out of this thing. We're going to get into the summer. Uh, people are going to get out of this out of this uh, virus season, and uh, we're going to we're going to be picking up and moving forward. I'm very excited about it. But all of that being said, plan on coming this coming uh, Sunday morning, at ten o'clock. And uh, I, I feel like I've got a word that's going to be Father's Day. It's a special day, and I really would like to have you come and just share this time with me. Uh, my my friendship with you means more than I could ever say. And I really mean that. I think that's something that doing this this, this time we have together has, has really birthed in me a new appreciation for the value that I hold in my friends. And, uh, and, and when I say thank you for being my friend, I really mean that. I, I truly do. Thank you for being a part of my life. And uh, I, I want you to know how much I love and appreciate you. And, and so I look forward to spending some time with you. And we'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, at the end of this, we'll, I'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But I do want to just encourage you on this coming Sunday morning, be as respectful as you possibly can. We want everybody to come that feels good about coming. Uh, uh, those that are wearing masks, please do so uh, with confidence. You don't have to feel bad because somebody else isn't. Um, you know, I know because I know that there's a lot of people that are going to 
they're going to the grocery store, they're going to the hardware store, and, and the people in there, they're not wearing masks. And so it's just, it's kind of, we've kind of moved out of that in so many ways, and so it's just kind of natural that they come to church and they don't think about it. But uh, we, we do want to be respectful to everybody, and I, and I promise those of you that are concerned about it, we're going to make a concerted effort not to scare you, okay? <laughs> uh, I promise we will, we, will, we will try to get everybody to behave as much as possible. <laughs> oh, man, I do appreciate you. Now, we've set aside this uh, on, on Fridays. I've set aside this time to, um, to answer some questions. I've had a few questions that's come in, and I wanted to answer those for you. These are some that's... <clears throat> that's uh, you know, got some teeth to them, and I, you know, I want to try to answer them uh, as honestly as I can. Uh, I can tell you my perspective and my viewpoint on it, and uh, um, hopefully it will maybe settle some things in your heart. Because it, it, let, let me just say, even concerning answering questions, you're not going to find that the answer fits every situation. Because sometimes there are conditions that might cause the situation to to vary to where it's it i mean there's conditions there's reasons you know we've got an answer for this but the fact is is we need to understand that that sometimes there's there's things that might so so what i'm just saying is keep an open heart okay just just open your heart the the first question that i had was in regard to debate I think it was because of all the things that's taking place across the country, and there's just a real debate about um, uh, about uh, uh, race, uh, about position, about what states ought to be doing, about what this one's rights or that one's rights. And uh, <clears throat> let me just read you what the what the question is. It says, "Is debate a healthy thing for us?" And I, I believe that they're saying this because. Uh, it seems like there's been so much contention. So is is debate a healthy thing for us? In this day of political diversity and unrest, it seems that it just brings division and contention. How do you see debate? That's a good question. That's a good question. And here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to answer that in this way. Uh, here's why I think debate is important. We need debate in our life. We really do, and especially when you've got people who hold strong values on both sides. But it's only as, as false beliefs are placed upon the table of examination that we really have the opportunity to fully understand our own belief. You know what I mean? It's, it's only when we hear fully that with which we disagree that we can with authority embrace that which is our own. I mean, dare we prefer one opinion above another based on the ignorance of what the other side holds? I mean, you know, we don't even know what we don't even know what they believe, but but we disagree with them. I mean, the majority of people today they hold opinions that they have not earned, but rather what kind of ha that has been imposed on them by their peers, by the other people around them, and they never allow themselves even for a moment to become the person with whom they disagree. And, and I think that's terrible. I, I think you really cannot uh, speak to a situation when you, don't, when you don't know fully what the other side believes. I mean, if you don't fully know both sides, you have no grounds for professing one above the other. And I believe that we, perf that we forfeit our rights by adopting the opinions of others. I mean, <laughs> You, you might as well not even have that freedom if you simply to choose to go the direction of, of the majority. Well, they all believe that, so I guess I will. I mean, come on, you are better than that. And, and so I want to tell you, here's how you do it. Uh, when, when you've got somebody that you're in disagreement about, here's what you do. To truly hear the other side of the debate, you've got to find somebody who believes with conviction that their side is correct. Only then... Will you have a genuine exchange of passion, of thought, and of will? And when you talk to somebody, you need to do it this way. Don't, um, don't dominate the conversation or be afraid to hear the opposing view. I was listening to a debate the other day between two people, 
and they were talking over each other so much that number one, you couldn't understand either one of them, but it was like the, the moment the other person started to say something, they, they stamped it down. You know, is the moment they started, they interrupted them and they stamped it down. And, and if you really, you know, if you really are interested in, in the debate or in these situations, when you talk to someone, don't do that. Don't dominate the conversation. Don't be afraid to sit there and listen completely to their entire view. And when you hear it, pause at, interv at, at, at intervals and at the well, that's an interruption there. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, what was I saying? I was saying until we come to the place that we can see all sides of truth, we got to realize that our perception of truth is actually only a half truth. You know, diversity is not necessarily evil. It, it matter of fact, diversity may just be a broader view of what is right. Now think about that. I mean, you may be describing the same horse. You're just on one side of it and they're on the other, but it's still the horse. And, and just simply because they're different doesn't necessarily mean they're wrong. It just, it just what they believe may just be a, an extension of what you believe of what is right. However, let me just close it with this. When you debate an issue, when you decide you're going to do that, you need to be blunt. You need to be straightforward with truth as you see and as you understand it. Because if you don't believe it, why should anybody else? So anyway, that's my, that is my take on, on, the, on the situation of debate. Uh, I do believe debate is healthy. I think it's very good for us. I think it's making us dig out things that uh, we, we uh, have been maybe afraid to talk about. You know, and, and um, you know, it's kind of like this right now, what we're having, what we're seeing across the country. This is a discussion that needs to be had. Uh, we can't hide it. We can try to stamp it down. But I'm just telling you, we need to get, we need to sit down at the table and put it all on the table and discuss it. Or we'll never find a solution. OK, OK, that's that's on that one. The second one has to do with prayer in school. I knew this one was going to pop up. Uh, I just know, should we have prayer in school? Well, it uh, seems like every time I get into this, somebody pops that up. And I've got a view that may be different than yours. And so based on the fact of what I just said to you about debate, <laughs> uh, I want you to completely hear what I've got to say, because I think this is very important. The discussion of prayer in school um, should not center in this day and time. Maybe it could have at one time but it should not center in this day and time on the issue of religious freedom. But rather the thing that we need to be looking at is the issue of fairness to the rights of everybody that attends that school. Now, here's what I mean. In this day and time, we have a diversity of nationalities presented in our school system. Every community has got a diversity. In our society, we find Christian, we find Jew, we find Muslim, we find Buddhist, we find Hindu, even atheists scattered through there. Now, when it comes to prayer, to assume that prayer must be given in a certain way is to assume that each person worships God the same way that I do. Now think about it for just a moment. I may not agree with the way that they worship, but neither should I impose my prayer upon them without their consent. I mean, if we're going to have prayer in the public schools, here's my question. Whose prayer should we submit? Should it be the Christian prayer? Should it be the Buddhist prayer? How about the Muslim prayer? Maybe the Hindu prayer? Which prayer do we really want? Because we've got all of these different nationalities beginning to be represented. And here's the big catch right here, is the fact that if the taxes of each of these nationalities contribute and provide for our educational system, then they within that system should be protected from a religious belief of which they disagree being imposed upon them. Does that, does that make sense? I mean, they're paying out of their taxes to be there and therefore, uh, they should be protected from having a religion that they disagree with forced down their throat. Now, I know that we can say, well, I was here first. Well, <laughs> actually, you weren't. 
but uh, that's another story altogether. But the fact is, is one of the pillars of our Constitution is to worship God as we see fit. And, and therefore, I think from the standpoint of prayer in school, the teachers who are paid by the state should not impose religious preference on any student. I'm uncomfortable with that. I'm uncomfortable with somebody that is a religion that I totally disagree with, or that I believe is not real or right. I don't want my, ch my children, my grandchildren, being subjected to that. However, here's the caveat. Each student, each one, should have the freedom of religious expression as he or she sees fit, provided it doesn't interfere with the class structure or become intrusive to other students. I think the students should be able to pray. If you want really prayer to break out in the school, it needs to happen from the students and not from the state or not from the adults. I'm just telling you, uh, the, 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 the whole thing has shifted. It's not like it was back in the Leave it to Beaver days. It, it's just not. Uh, we, we now, we have expanded are, we've, we've expanded who we are. And so I see the issue of prayer in school as an exercise of religious freedom, to be honest with you, rather than religious worship, which it ought to be. I mean, if we're going to pray in school, let it not just be some political hack that's doing it and making it happen, but rather out of a heart of worship that a prayer would rise from our children to, to the Lord. I mean, most of those who argue for prayer in school, they don't pray at home. I'm telling you. And so I find it a spiritual one. Does that make sense? It is a political move and not a spiritual one. Okay. All right. Uh, does that make sense? I, I, I know that that's, I know that that's, um, that, that's, that's pretty broad, but, but, uh, I, I really think that's right. I, I think we are growing and evolving as a society and we got to learn how to do it. Uh, we got to learn how to do it. And you can't just thumb your nose at everybody that disagrees with you or that you disagree with. You can't do that. Um, I, I, I think we, I think we've got to maintain a right attitude toward these kind of things. I, I really do. Um, I, I know it's real easy to say we want prayer in school. Well, I want our young people to pray any time that they want. Provided, like I said, it's not uh, disrupting uh, the class structure or, or being imposed on people who don't want it. I want our young people to do it, but I don't want it to be a state thing that says that, okay? Um, I hope that makes sense. And, and we can talk that through a little bit more if you would like, just as soon as you would like. Okay, I've got, I've got another one, and <laughs> this, is, this is another big one, okay? Uh, this one has to do with the death penalty. And let me read this to you here. Uh, it says that the, the Bible seems to support the death penalty. Do you believe it's right or wrong for our states to use the death penalty today? Um, okay. Now, that, uh, that's a, that's a, that has been an argument that has been for a very long time. Let me give you my perspective on this. I've thought a lot about it. Um, I've, I've given as much, well, I've thought a lot about it over the last few decades. I believe I have something that I have peace with that I really think is right. Uh, most of the people refer to the death penalty that was in the Bible. You know, somebody would do something, boom, they would put them to death. Um, <laughs> you know, they did this, they own them or they would, I mean, how, how horrible. Uh, it's just, I mean, you stop and think, you're thinking, dear God, that was brutal. Um, but let me explain something to you. And I want to compare the, the people in the days of the Bible with now. In the days of the Bible, there were people that were just as dangerous as there are today. Do you know that there's some dangerous people out there today? Uh, and I'm not talking about somebody who's shoplifting I'm talking about seriously dangerous, dangerous, scary criminals. And uh, there were people that were in those days that was just as bad or worse than they are today. 
I mean, there were criminals that would that would murder, rape, destroy with absolutely no regard to life whatsoever. And when it came to incarceration, their options were limited. I mean, stop and think about that for just a moment. In that era, they had no real facilities to restrain somebody for the rest of their life. I mean, you can only keep somebody in a tent for so long. Let's say you've got somebody that comes and they do something that is just God awful. I mean, they 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 murder somebody in the in the worst sense, and and what are you going to do with them? Like I said, they had no facilities. They were they were tent dwellers. They were they they lived in tents. They did not have facilities like you have today or like we have today. And uh, the problem was that when you had an individual that was that dangerous to community, there was absolutely no place to incarcerate them for punishment. You just, you just couldn't do it. Now, today, the death penalty is not necessary as it was then. It's not. We have better facilities. We have resources to capture and to legitimately punish wrongdoers. We have right now, we can bring people in and we can incarcerate them and keep them literally for the rest of their life. I think rather than the death penalty, a better solution is to make that person pay the penalty for his terrible transgression for the rest of his natural life. Now, I'm not talking about just in the convenience of a cell with satellite and the internet, but rather a lifetime of hard labor. See, it seems to me that lethal injection, and I'll just use that as, as an example, that lets them off the hook while the families of their victims suffer literally every moment for the rest of their lives. You know, I just see them getting off the hook and going on, but the suffering for the families continue. So I see the death penalty as a step in the wrong direction. I personally believe that we are not, and that's not to say that they were wrong in the days of the Bible, they just didn't have a choice. Again, what are you going to do when you've got somebody that is that bad? You've got to do something with them because they get loose. They're, they're going to kill you and everybody close to you. And, and so there had to be some very strict things in those days that, that we don't have to do today. And so the death penalty, to me, to me, my opinion, I think I think the death penalty is a step in the wrong direction, and I personally would like to see it removed. That's my opinion. Nevertheless, I will say this. If one of the states like Texas or Oklahoma or Louisiana or whatever, whatever state, if they choose to keep it, I believe that it must be something that they don't take lightly and something that remains an agonizing process to them. I, in other words, something... I, I think they should travail over this before they would ever put somebody to death. I think there should be repeals. And in this day and time, we're also dealing with technology where we can look at DNA and we can see, I mean, there's been so many people that's been let off the hook because they, they checked the DNA and they said, this person didn't do it. This isn't the DNA. And so, I mean, we're, we're in a different age now than what we were even 20, 30 years ago. And, and so I, I do think that they should um, uh, agonize over it. I think there should be an opportunity for appeal. However, once the decision is made, once the decision is made for that, I believe the task should be carried out within a year. Uh, the years of appeal, the years, the 10 years, 20 years, 30 years of appeal, and the millions and millions of dollars are simply irresponsible. Now that's my take on that, and and I know that's that's a that's a that's a that's a tough one for a lot of people. Um, you know, I I think that I think these are things that are very important questions. But but the reason why we need to answer these questions is because they tell us who we are. You know what I'm saying? They they tell us this is who we are as a society. This is reflective of my core values. And, and listen to me, you don't have to agree with me. That's, that, that is fine. I mean, sometimes I don't agree with myself. But the fact is, is you need to be clear on what you believe. And so my, my task in this situation is to try to throw a couple of ideas out on the table, maybe that you hadn't thought about, for you to at least consider, because I, I think it's good for you to have an opportunity 
to, to look at something and, and make a judgment about it, okay? Uh, I've got one final one because I am out of time here. Uh, it says, I've been given counseling. I, I've been asked to give counseling to somebody. Is there a place that I should start in helping them resolve their problems? Let me, let me read that again. Uh, I've been asked to give counseling to someone. Is there a place that I should start in helping them resolve their problems? Yes, 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 yes. Um, and, and really, let me just tell you something. You, you should not take that lightly. If somebody at a moment of crisis comes to you and trusts you, that's, that's huge. That, I mean, that really is. That is a special place. And you need to give honor to that. Don't lightly take it. Uh, you know, uh, put your phone down, uh, turn off the television. I mean, when you're dealing with somebody, they're laying their life out on the line and it needs to be special enough that you give honor to them to help them work what they're doing. And I just want to say that if you're going to accept the task of counseling somebody, I think your first goal needs to get, first of all, a clear understanding of why they're there. I mean, you got to know a lot of people, they don't even know why they're there. So start with two questions. What's the problem and what do you want the results to be? I think those are two questions to always ask anytime you ever are counseling somebody. And because the rest of the questions, I think that they're going to just fall in behind those other two questions. Because it would surprise you how many people, they really don't even know what the problem is, much less what they want the solution to look like. And, and so if you're going to counsel somebody, I, I want to encourage you, when you counsel them, um, learn to listen. We're not very good listeners. I, I don't know if you realize that. And that's, that's, something, that, <laughs> that's something I found out about myself. <laughs> and, I, and I don't know if it's because I think I'm so smart or I just can't wait to hear myself talk. <laughs> in to sit down for just a few moments and just listen. And, and I'll just tell you right now, it takes discipline and it takes determination to do that. So I, I, and let me just throw this out here. I, I think what might also help you in listening to them, I'd encourage you to start looking for the conversation that's going on between the lines. Because even when people are saying something to you, there's another conversation that's taking place between the lines. And, and I think you need to learn to, to, to ask the questions to help them, uh, you know, lead them kind of in the right direction. It just helps them to come up with the conclusions, like I said, on their own. Now, when interpreting misbehavior, I, I like to ask uh, kind of like the following. I got about three or four questions I like to ask. I like to, I like to say, what are you doing? I mean, I want to hear them tell me what are they doing. And, and then I want to ask, you're supposed to be doing it this way, aren't you? I mean, I, I, I want to find their area of agreement because sometimes people just, I'm not wrong, everybody else is wrong. And so then I will say, here are the effects of your actions. If you do this, this is what's going to happen. And then I close it with, you have a decision to make. I think, and I say that because I think it's important that you not make their decision for them. You know, I've, I've been very frustrated. I got to where I didn't counsel anybody anymore because, you know, people come, they, they basically want to tell you their problems. They'll take two hours doing it, and then they're going to do what they want to do anyway. I'm thinking, really? I, I'm, <laughs> I stood up in church, it's been back a few months ago, and I said, look, if you're not going to do what I tell you to do, don't come and ask my opinion. <laughs> Oh, gosh, I'm laughing about it now, but I wasn't laughing then. I thought, you've got to be kidding me. But the fact is, is they are important. And if someone values you enough to become transparent before you, honor that. Like I said, turn off the phone. Turn off the television. Look at them in the eye. Ask them how they're feeling and let them finish. Don't, don't interject don't, and, and this is, this is again, this is a problem that I think I've had in the past. Maybe we've all had this. I tried to give them the answer before they even got all the question out. You know, I just pick up on it, pick up on it and say, oh, here's what you need to do. And, you know, when they leave, it's been about 90% just listening to me and, and, and 
I don't know that I really helped him. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, that's the, those are the those are the questions for this weekend. Of course, we're taking every Friday. We're doing a Q and A. And uh, those of you that want to maybe ask a question, thank you. Those of you that have submitted these questions, these are some pretty big. I mean, these are these are huge questions that you sent today, and and I pray that I pray that uh, they really speak to your heart, uh, and and especially the one that I did at the beginning on debate. I think that's very important because many times we're arguing what we believe without even understanding what the other side believes. And, and I, just, I just think that's a mistake. But you can listen to that again. But thank you for joining me. I mean that. I, I appreciate that. Your friendship is a precious gift to me. Uh, it is. I don't, I don't take that lightly. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you, for, thank you for standing with me. Thank you, those of you that have dialogued back and forth with me. I appreciate it. Uh, won't you pray with me? I'm going to this next week. I'm going to be making a change. I, you know, I've been in this set for a long time, but I'm going to start doing some more things on, on YouTube. I'm really going to begin to reach out in that area. And uh, I just need the wisdom of God to know what to do. I, I want it to look right and sound right and be right and make a contribution you know, to somebody's life. So hopefully by next Monday, I'll, I'll be in a new setting. Uh, it's, it's, I generally pull the trigger really quick when I make up my mind to do something. So sometimes that's great. And sometimes it comes back and bites you. So, <laughs> oh, anyway, um, Hey, we're going to have church this weekend. If you're within driving distance, please come, please come. It's going to be a wonderful father's day. And I just got a word that I just think is going to be a blessing to you. And I really look forward to having you there. Um, I, I do want to encourage you once again, please be respectful. During this time, there are some people that are very uncomfortable. Uh, the social distancing to them is really important. And, you know, it, it doesn't have to be because you think they're going to get sick or you think you're going to get sick. But sometimes you do things because you love someone. Sometimes you go the extra mile for someone just out of love. <laughs> you know, you may think this is stupid, but but I do it because I love you and I care for you. And that really should be it. And so when you come on Sunday, like I said, we have stations for... <clears throat> if you could just um, refrain from hugging. <laughs> it's hard for me to do, I'm telling you. And if I do, I'll apologize, but it's just, I, we, we just want to honor everybody that we can, okay? Uh, you can go to our website, our church website, fwcelgin.com, E-L-G-I-N, fwcelgin.com. And we've got resources, a lot of things on there that I think will be a blessing to you and you'll enjoy. Also, there's an opportunity for you to give. Here we're coming up on Sunday. Uh, I know that a lot of people watch online. Uh, I do want to say that I so, so much appreciate all of you, our family, that have been so faithful with your giving. A lot of you have done it online. They've got that place on there where you can go. And you also even may have our uh, a website on your phone app. Uh, it has a place that you can give of your tithing. Or if you want to make donations, there's some people that says, I want to give a donation. Uh, how do I do it? Well, you can just go to our website and it'll it'll show you what to do. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, uh, certainly get back with you. And, and uh, I just want to say thank you in advance. And, and I said that to say thank you for being so faithful. All of you that are part of our family, thank you for being so faithful. Wow, it's, it's been incredible. You've been incredible. But thank you, thank you, thank you for being with me today. And uh, I, I'm hoping to see you Sunday. That would be nice. Oh, before I leave, uh, just right down below, you can push... Um, you can push like. Wouldn't that be nice to push like? <laughs> See, my feelings just get so hurt if you don't push like. <laughs> and then push share. That would be good also. And leave a comment. Uh, I, I love to converse with you. I will respond to all of your comments and um, uh, look forward to seeing you. All right, that's my time. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you Sunday or I'll be back this next week, Monday, Monday through Friday at seven o'clock PM. Looking forward to seeing you then. Love you, love you, love you. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.